That was from a card that my nephew got me after my PhD defense, and I think it makes a great prelude to the obligatory beginning of every commencement speech. Class of 2024, we made it. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, members of convocation, fellow graduates and guests, my name is Nikhil George, and it is an absolute honor to represent the Faculty of Science as its inaugural graduate valedictorian. I'd like to thank the faculty and the Institutional Selection Committee for giving me this fantastic opportunity. Being back on campus takes me back to the first time I visited to interview with my graduate supervisor. After we met, I was flooded with self-doubt. My solution? Before I even got on the bus back home, I emailed her saying that I'm 100% on board to join the group. And so, my journey at UW began. Since UW attracts talent from all over the world, and since science traverses geographical borders, it is likely that many of you have had to build a new community since you arrived here. Just as I had built mine, the COVID-19 pandemic began. With friendships lost and feelings of uncertainty gained, my mental health spiraled. Among others, dreaming of better days to come, I looked to the future, but I had no direction. People would often ask me the dreaded question, what are your plans after school? I had no idea. As students in science, we try to plan our experiments, rationalize, theorize, and measure everything we can. But the pandemic forced us to let go and trust the process. We don't have full control, and that's OK. During the final year of my PhD, I visited one of my friends working at the Joslin Diabetes Center in Boston. Situated around the corner is the Harvard Medical School campus, which captivated my attention. I found a research group there that ignited my interest, but was convinced I didn't have what it takes. So I didn't reach out. A few weeks later, while watching an episode of Shark Tank with my mom, one of my favorite pitches came from an entrepreneur that was educated at Harvard, and I took that as a sign. The next day, I told my mom, I want to apply for a postdoc at Harvard. And she laughed and said, this is because of that Shark Tank episode, right? Moms always know. I finally sent the email, and eventually, I got one back from who is now my postdoc supervisor at Harvard Medical School. Even if the path ahead is not clear, if you keep walking, eventually you will get to where you need to be. Now I know many of us in this room are no strangers to imposter syndrome, but sometimes I'm convinced I'm its mascot. Being raised in an immigrant family, an abusive household, and a single parent household afterwards, I learned to doubt myself quite early. I neglected school, failed tests, exams, and classes. If you want to know how bad it got, in high school, one of my friends once asked me, how did your test go? I said, I got a 27. And she said, out of what? The only class I loved was biology, but I was removed from an advanced placement biology class so that stronger students could take my spot. Teachers, friends, guidance counselors, and even my principals advised me to pursue undergraduate studies outside of the sciences. Against their advice, I applied to life sciences, and I remember when I got an early acceptance, I was over the moon, ready to prove everyone wrong. When I logged in, I saw that it was an alternative offer to a non-science program. Part of me was convinced that they were right. Still, my desire to study biology remained, so I worked as hard as I could. I improved my grades, received the highest biology grade in my graduating class, and was able to study life sciences at the University of Toronto, and now receive my PhD in biology here at the University of Waterloo. I truly believe that passion can overcome all else, and that sometimes it is not external circumstances, but rather the stories we tell ourselves that limit us. Now, you might think that with my background, a PhD and a postdoc at Harvard would have had me on cloud nine, but those feelings escaped me. Looking back, I realized it wasn't the awards, it wasn't the papers, it wasn't the conferences or even finishing that made me the happiest. What made me the happiest was seeing how far I had come and the people that were with me throughout my journey. 
By focusing my attention there, I have since found far more self-confidence and fulfillment. I would like you all to now take a moment to consider the challenges that you've faced in your life, academic or otherwise. Put yourselves back in the shoes that you once wore and think about whether you thought you would make it here. And now, think about the people that helped make this possible. Perhaps they're in this room, maybe you've lost touch with them, or maybe they're no longer with us, but in some way, in your accomplishments today and hereafter, you will always carry a part of them with you. I think of my brother Joseph, who never stopped believing in me, and my mother Nina, who worked countless hours to support her boys. Look back to where you started and express gratitude for those that helped you get to where you are, because unlike feelings during moments of success, gratitude is a feeling that endures. I sincerely congratulate you for all your hard work and achievements and for all that you have endured. Waterloo warriors endure. Graduation is just the beginning, and even if you don't know what's next, or if you are left with feelings of apathy, that's okay. You will find your path and figure out what makes you light up. Thank you very much.